again. God is just so awesome. Oh, God is just so good. I don't know about anybody else, but this past few weeks has just been fire. Oh, my goodness. We've been hearing fire preach, and I just feel so good. If I were to sing a song, I know it would go back to the early birds and say, Jesus' love is bubbling over. Right. That's not, God is just so good. I, I was driving in the, in the car and having me and Jesus' time, and I began to just cry and just think about just how good God is. Not for anything that he's done, but just how good God is. Amen. God is just awesome. And I and I stand before you. I don't take this lightly. I give all praise to God to God for allowing me to be in this position. Um, it's a it's a strange thing how life happens. It's a strange thing, but God knows what he's doing any, anyway. Amen. I won't be before you long. You know, if it's quick, it's gonna stick. Amen. <laughs> All right, so my message today is moving past the dysfunction. You know, there was a point in our life that we learned that something that we thought was normal, it actually turned out to be not normal. I used to, when I learned how to write, I used to hold my pen like this, all awkward, and it wasn't until like second grade the teacher was like, you're supposed to hold it like this. But, you know, I had already learned to hold it like this. So, you know, I still suffer from this. I write like this, and my handwriting is so sloppy. But, you know, I can get away with it because I work in the medical field. But, <laughs> but something that I thought was normal is actually not normal. So, what happens when we find out the dynamic that we thought was normal actually is dysfunctional? Go with me to Genesis chapter 37, verses 2 through 5, and verse 18. <clears throat> and it'll be for your hearing. Amen? Amen? These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Balaha and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was a son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Verse 18, and when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Go down to Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 through 7. For your hearing. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years, in the which there shall neither be earing nor harvest. Verse 7, And God sent me before you to preserve your posterity in the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Go to Psalms chapter 68, verse 6. For your hearing, God setteth the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with change, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Amen. Dysfunction simply means something that doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. Joseph came from a family full of dysfunction and juicy scandal. Who likes a good juicy scandal? <laughs> Joseph's little juicy scandal with his family, his great-grandfather 
was Abraham and his wife was Sarah. The same Abraham said that his wife was his sister because she was fair to look upon and he was scared he was going to get killed. More dysfunction happened when Sarah was, was unable to conceive, so Abraham slept with Hagar, her maidservant, and they had a son named Ishmael. Fast forward to Sarah seeing Ishmael mocking her son Isaac and having Hagar and Ishmael kicked out. The same great-grandfather that was going to have his son sacrificed. We're talking about some dysfunction within Joseph's family, amen? Now, his grandparents were Isaac and Rebekah. More dysfunction in his family tree. She gave birth to twins, Jacob and Esau, and we know that Isaac preferred Esau while Rebecca loved Jacob. This family favoritism was not hidden to the two boys who became rivals and not allies. We're talking about some dysfunction, amen? Now, here's some more juicy scandal on Joseph. His parents were Jacob and Rachel, and some serious dysfunction happened within his family. He had three stepmothers, Leah, his aunt, Remember old tender-eyed Leah? Does anybody know that book, old tender-eyed Leah? <laughs> Her servant, Zipah, and his mother's servant, Bilah. He had ten stepbrothers, one brother, and one stepsister. Now, it was common back in the day to have more than one wife. Not today, right? Mm. But with having more than one wife came some jealousy, some insecurity, and some conflict among the wives. Now, again, we're talking about some dysfunction in Joseph's family. Jacob was a passive parent. He was not a leader within the family, and that brought some pain and some confusion within his family. Joseph's brothers took turns being brutal, conniving, and openly immoral. In today's time, I'm sure Joseph and his family would have been on Jerry Springer, or I'm sure... They would have been on Dr. Phil having a whole segment just about how dysfunctional their family was. Dysfunction in a family is nothing new. Here in the scripture, we find that Joseph was 17. He was feeding the flock with his brothers. Then Joseph brought his father an evil report. I, uh, I have two brothers. I'm the middle child, and I, they'd always constantly do dumb stuff. I'd always like to go tell on them and get them in trouble. So I'm sure that this was not the first time Joseph considered to tattletale on his brothers. And then Joseph was also a favorite child, and he got special treatment. In my family circle, I was a favorite to my uncle. He would do special things to me, get me candy. My oldest brother, he was my grandmother's favorite. She would do special things for him. My youngest brother, there's something always about the baby, isn't there? They get that little special, special treatment. Now, Joseph, he was number 11 out of 12, so he was in the younger, the special treatment era. All right. But there's something about getting special treatment, isn't there? When somebody gives you some special treatment, there's something special about getting special treatment. Now, his siblings were not blind to the fact that Joseph received special treatment from their father, and I'm sure that made them pretty mad, huh? They probably felt like, what? what's so special about him? What about me? Mm -mm -mm. Do you feel when somebody gets special treatment at your job, why does she get a raise and she doesn't do anything? I'm working hard, why not me? There's something about that special favoritism. Now, the dysfunction in Joseph's family doesn't stop with favoritism and jealousy and hatred. Going further into the scripture, his brethren conspired to kill him. You wouldn't think that anything that your siblings ever did could be that bad for you to kill them, would you? That's not normal to want to kill your sibling. I know my brothers, they taught me how to fight. We would go tit for tat. They would sucker punch me in the stomach, and I'd fight them, and it would be back and forth. But never one time did I ever think to kill my brothers. But his brothers, I thought to kill him. His brothers threw him in a pit. They sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites, which was his grandfather, his grandpa Isaac's half-brother's family. And then they told their father that he was devoured by an evil beast. They didn't say an animal, they said an evil beast. 
But little did they know that what they were trying to do for the bad turned around for, for the good. Even in the midst of the major dysfunction, Joseph didn't turn bitter, he didn't turn hateful, he didn't turn resentful. When Joseph told his brethren that it was him, it was Joseph, they were troubled at his presence. They knew that the horrible, terrible things that they did to their brother, some of us may have came out of a dysfunctional family. Some may have been physically abused, some may have been mentally abused, some might have been tortured, some might have been molested, they could have been raped. The list can go on and on. And there's something about when you think that you're in a normal family situation. I was in a situation where I was raised by my grandparents and I thought that was normal. You know, I, I would see my parents come and go, I would hear different things. I thought it was normal to hear cussing all the time, to see smoking all the time, to drinking, to be living it up. I thought that was normal. At a point in our lives, we have learned that something that we thought was normal turned out to be dysfunctional. When was a moment that you realized that perhaps your family was dysfunctional? <laughs> For me, it was when I stayed at my friend's house and I saw that they had a, a mother and a father in the household and they cooked dinner and they all were just chill. I realized that that's normal. When I realized I wasn't in a normal family dynamic, I wanted normal. The scripture shows us a formula for a wholesome functioning family dynamic, and that's Galatians chapter 3, verses 18 through 21 for your hearing. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not better against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Proverbs 22 and 6, train up your child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. A functioning and wholesome, God-fearing family dynamic is possible. Now, when we get the Holy Ghost, that's an individual thing, right? Psalms 68 and 6, God set up the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. God can choose you out of everybody in your family and give you the Holy Ghost. It doesn't even matter if you come from a no good family, a super dysfunctional family. It don't matter. Joseph, he came from a dysfunctional family. He came from a good, no good family. But look how God worked it out. He turned around. Joseph was able to help his family. Just like Joseph's brethren were troubled by his presence, how does your family act towards you after you get the Holy Ghost? Are they troubled by your presence? I remember when I got the Holy Ghost, I came home and I told my grandparents, I got the Holy Ghost. They looked at me like I done said something crazy. Remember my grandma looked at me crazy. My grandpa was like, do you know what you're getting yourself into? I was like, whoa, okay. But you never know the impact or the position that you're going to have within your family after you receive the Holy Ghost. You know, they know the difference in your life. They know who to call for when things go bad. They know who, to, who they can ask, please pray for me. Please pray for me. You become a leader within your family. And God doesn't just stop with your natural family. You know, we come out of dysfunction, but he puts us into a functioning family when you receive the Holy Ghost and become a part of the body. We have a natural family, we have a school family, we have a work family, but our church family is closer than any of those can be. We know who we can rely on, we know who we can depend on, we know who, we, if we're having a hard day, you can call up, hey sister, will you pray for me? I'm just, I'm not feeling good. You know, the church family, they stay the same. You know, the family, our natural family, they can be wishy-washy. One minute they're mad at you, you owe them $10, they're not talking to you for two days, three days, they're mad at you. But the saints, you know, we have a family, we know who we can depend on, we can have sisters, we can have brothers. I always wanted a sister. For so, I always wanted a sister because I had two brothers. And God blessed me with so many sisters. I have younger sisters, I have older sisters. But God, God knows how to work it, don't he? God knows how to give us a family. Amen. But you know, no wonder we all came from a dysfunctional family when we didn't have the Holy Ghost because our father was a devil. Amen. 
John 8, 44 says, Ye are your father, ye, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. No wonder we had so much abuse in our family. No wonder that it was normal to be abused mentally in our family. But don't let your family history define who you are. You know, sometimes I was kind of nervous to tell people, they're like, who, whose family are you? And to say, oh, I'm a Fouché. Oh, they start judging me like, oh, she might be Debbie's daughter. Amen. But we have got to move past our family history just like Joseph because God can change our circumstances. Now, if you've been holding a grudge towards your family, Look how Joseph have overcame it. People can change, and we all are a witness to that. Without God, we were living a sinful life, and we thought that sin was normal. You may have been a thief. You may have been a liar. You may have been a fornicator. You might have been doing this and that. But when you received the Holy Ghost, you were a new creature. So don't give up on your family because they can change as well. <clears throat> After I got the Holy Ghost, you know, I began to witness to my family little by little. And, you know, before long, my grandfather, he got baptized, got the Holy Ghost, and he was a deacon in our church. You don't know what's going to happen. You cannot give up on your family. God can use our worst predicament, our horrible history, to accomplish his purpose. It may not feel good coming from a dysfunctional family, you know, getting abused. It may not feel good, but it can be for our good. How can we have a testimony if we never went through a test? How can you be a witness to the transforming power of the Holy Ghost if you never experienced anything? You know, you can think about all the different type of people that come through our path, and the, everybody has a history. We all have a history. Everybody has a history who we come across. But you don't know what kind of witness you can be to that person to show how you can overcome. You can get out of a dysfunctional family, and God can take you into a functioning family. Amen? Amen. 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 So just like Joseph, we can move past our dysfunction. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us all please stand.